Hello, my name is Paul Van Balen. I'm the designated broker for the Sunworld Group. We're a property management firm located here in Southwest Washington. Today, I'm going to talk to you about tenant versus landlord responsibilities as far as who pays for what. So now tenant has moved in, leases signed and so forth, things are rolling along. And then one day the tenant calls up about a plumbing issue. Then you decide on what, who is going to pay for what. Or they call up about an electrical issue and so forth. So the biggest thing in, um, in uh, the landlording is going to be tenant and, or is going to be plumbing and electrical issues. So tenant calls up and says toilet is plugged. Landlord gets upset because it's probably going to cost some money. So the, the idea is that if, the, if uh, in a good lease would have, if you clear the clog, assuming it's a plugged up toilet, uh, from top side, in other words, plunging, snaking from the inside, generally the, uh, the tenant would be responsible. If, let's say, it's, uh, it's 20 feet into the sewer line uh, and it can't be determined what has caused the problem, generally the landlord will pay for that. But if you find kids' toys, baby wipes, so forth, that is going to be the tenant responsibility. Now, sometimes if the tenant had just moved in and had these problems and you found baby wipes and whatnot, sometimes it might be a little hard to blame that particular tenant since they just moved in. But 30 days goes by, so forth, and especially if you have old galvanized piping where the baby wipes will adhere to the inside of the, of the pipes that cause the clogging. So you might want to just say in your leases, uh, uh, no baby wipes uh, down the toilet, maybe just um, human waste and toilet paper down the, down the toilets. Now the electrical, uh, very common, especially in wintertime, older construction, tenants will plug in a space heater, save money because they don't want to, they don't want to use the wall heaters, etc. So what happens is then uh, part of the electricity goes out in, in uh, the particular room that uh, had this, the heater plugged in. That circuit gets overloaded and it's supposed to do what it's supposed to do, which is uh, stop the electricity flow. Now you got to get an electrician out there. The first question I ask the tenant when they say that they have partial electricity in the house, maybe a room or two is out, is ask, um, did they plug in a high load uh, item such as a heater? Maybe they have a stereo and a uh, computer and whatnot on that same circuit overloads it and you have a problem. Now, before you run out and call a uh, electrician, if it's newer construction, maybe built in the 80s on, uh, you could uh, have the tenant look for a uh, GFI, that's uh, and a plug, it looks like a little circuit breaker, usually has a black and red uh, buttons on it. And sometimes just uh, simply resetting that will uh, take care of the problem. Anyway, uh, so your big problems are going to be just generally electrical and, and plumbing, and that'll give you some idea who pays for what. Now, appliances, when they fail, appliances, if they're old, you need to uh, replace them, or uh, if they're newer, get them repaired. Now, as long as it's not misused by a tenant, then you would pay for the appliance repair. For this and any other information, please contact us. Thank you.